see, I can't see. Okay. All right. So Miss 13, we just finished putting the purple disease detecting liquid all over your teeth. Here is a mirror for you to look. My calculations is you have about 30% of biofilm, which biofilm is bacteria and plaque that's stuck to your teeth. So in these areas, you can see, we need to work on like better brushing and we'll go over that later on when we're talking, but those are just areas where it sticks. So with my little handy dandy chart, and I'll show you here also, it just shows like with gingivitis and getting in your gums, it can get inflamed if the bacteria gets trapped. And then with it getting trapped, it can start taking your bone levels and demineralizing your teeth. So we will talk about biofilm. With the family history of diabetes 2, and I'm really nervous. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Okay, with diabetes, it, it makes where your healing process is slowed down. So taking care of our mouth will take care of our whole body. Also, you have high blood pressure and taking care of our mouth can also reduce some of the, the adverse effects of high blood pressure. Off, and here is where I was talking about where it leads to gingivitis and then it can lead to periodontal disease. So when you heard me calling out the one, two, three, for some fives and sixes. I will show you on your chart and then I'll show you my visual aid. So these are the numbers right here. So some areas of concerns are fives, sixes, and some of your sevens. Anything from one to three is healthy gum tissue. So fours doesn't always mean bone loss. It can mean it's um, just inflamed gingival tissue. And then anything above four is bone loss and with confirming with your x-rays right here you would want your bone level up around these areas and you can see that it's way lower than what we really want so bone loss is irreversible you can't get it back but we can try to maintain the bone level that you have so it doesn't get any worse because Back here on your bottom right in the very back is very, very low. You can see it's all the way down to the bottom of your root. So what we want to do is work on better brushing techniques and at-home care to maintain that um, bone level so that we don't lose any more teeth or and you have many restorations. So we don't want any more restoration as well. And then looking at your pictures, your gums look pretty healthy. They're nice and pink. There's some little bit of redness in there, but everything looks good. You have a little slight calculus buildup, and that is the biofilm that's been on your teeth for more than um, 48 hours, so that hasn't been removed mechanically. So anything like sugary beverages or just carbohydrates in your diet, if it's not removed by brushing, it can sit on your teeth and then it will start to calcify and that can also irritate your gums and go down and start to demineralize your tooth surface. And with demineralizing your tooth surface, that can create cavities. And since you have a lot of restorative work in your mouth, it can see that you've probably had a few cavities before and with better brushing, that can help that. And then you can also see that in your radiographs, how you have some furcations, and furcations means that the bone level and the gum level goes down and it kind of exposes your root. Oh, okay. So now, do you have any questions about anything with the images, your x-rays, or anything with your plaque index and how biofilm attaches to your teeth? I would say that. And then, um, I would go and go over with her to show me her, her brushing technique. And then I would recommend the modified bass technique since she does have periodontal disease. And I would tell her to brush at a 45 degree angle, go up and swoop down up here 
Same over here, 45 degree angle. Swoop down. And same on the back side. And make sure that you're um, massaging the gums and stimulating your gums since you have periodontal disease. And go and with the anterior teeth on the upper, you want your toothbrush facing down towards your toes. And you're going to go three to five times on each tooth up and down, up and down, and move to the next tooth. Up and down, up and down. And then on the bottom, on the back side of your teeth, you want the handle facing up towards your nose. Go up and down three to five times per tooth and move to the next tooth. And you wanna brush twice a day for two minutes each time. And then with flossing, since you stated that you don't like to floss usually, and we want to also use a meat of use a medium bristle brush but we want to move to a soft bristle bristle brush okay and then you say that you don't like the floss i don't have floss with me but i would demonstrate with her with floss i would recommend super floss since she has some bridges i would show her in this area to create a c method and go up and down three to five times and then move to the other side and go up and down three to five times. And then with her bridge, I would recommend the super floss to go underneath the bridge and kind of move back and forth. And also when she gets to that one abutment to kind of go up and down three to five times with the C and then go all the way to the other side and up and down three to five times. And with the zinc mouth rinse that she stated that she uses, I would recommend her not to use that. She says she uses it if um, she has a bad taste or smell in her mouth. Yes, it can help prevent the bad smell in her mouth, but brushing also helps prevent the bad smell. And the zinc mouthwash can um, make her dry mouth worse. And the medications that you are on already make you have dry mouth. So adding the zinc mouth rinse is making you at a higher risk of cavities from your medications and the zinc mouth rinse that is no good having a dry mouth because it will make it more susceptible to cavities and with the restorations that you already have you don't want that going on and then the biofilm the plaque will adhere better to your teeth and you don't want that as well um, so i would say to use a fluoride mouth rinse and um, the soft bristle toothbrush and flossing. We would start with those things and then we would reassess at the next appointment to see how it's going, to see if we have um, maintained the bone level uh, and see if that's helping with more brushing at home, if it's helping the bad smell that she has, bad breath that she has coming from her. Also, I would say to keep the good work of not smoking. That's great that you haven't smoked in 10 years, so let's keep that up so we can keep our oral cancer level down low. So just see us back in a few weeks to do the other side of her scale and root planing, and then keep up with three to six month intervals depending on case by case. And that is it.